Welcome back to Bonanza Disc Golf and another episode of Project 100, which is my off-season training that I'm bringing you guys along with where I go from MA1 to MPO and hopefully even playing some Pro Tour events next year in the 2023 season. Last week, we talked a lot about forehand because I got on a coaching call with Josh over at Overthrow Disc Golf and I wanna give some updates to that as well as three big tips that really helped me to go from kind of beginner, more intermediate to an advanced player where I feel comfortable going into open. But first, oh, we're right by a road. There's a lot of loud cars because we're in Fairhope, Alabama, and if you know the South, you know they like their big trucks. But I real quick wanted to give an update as to how my training was going because so far this week, I have done a field work session and I did record my throws. I did a little bit of backhand, but really just focused on getting some big bombs out there. Not really too much on the form of it, just trying to focus on the snap and being smooth with it, which is one of the tips that we're gonna talk about today. But in terms of forehand, I did record a lot of those and I'm gonna overlay some of that footage here and I was noticing it was looking a little bit better and I wasn't trying to throw quite as far as when I did my coaching session with Josh and all these were going right around 300 feet and that's one of the things that we had talked about on our coaching session was to not focus on going crazy distance but a very smooth 300 and so that's also one of the tips that I'm gonna go over with you guys because just some little tweaks from what he said have already been implemented into my game to make me feel very confident throwing more and more forehands even down to my mids and putters because I'm understanding how to get them to come out more cleanly. One thing I haven't done yet this week is my non-disc golf workout. Now the reason why I'm really wanting to focus on doing non-disc golf workouts is because I noticed that I'm not really in great shape right now, at least compared to where I used to be athletically. So I wanted to try to get closer to that shape because even though in disc golf you don't necessarily have to be in the best shape ever, I don't think it would hurt at all to be less risk prone because you're more trained, to have more just general power in your muscles, and to be more flexible. So those are the things that I'm working on and I did not do my workout yet. I also haven't showered in a few days because I live in that van back there. And so we're going to Planet Fitness today and I'm going to do my first strength training workout, not just cardio. So tomorrow, Tomorrow, not today, because some of you guys posted today. Tomorrow, if you ask, did you lift yesterday, and you're the first person to ask that, and I didn't lift, then I'll send you a disc. Now, a lot of you guys have still been asking me if I putt every day, and that was only a one-time offer if I didn't do my 200 putts last week. Only for tomorrow, tomorrow being Sunday, November 27th. If it's not that day, don't ask, but if it is that day and I didn't do it, I'm gonna send you a free disc. Now to be completely honest with you guys, I was planning on this being much more of a, well, I've figured out so much with my forehand form and worked on it so much, but I've been a little bit busy, especially with getting out content. And I am gonna have an update with some content that we're gonna be doing for Vlogmas in December. Everyone's trying to do what I already do, so we're gonna have to up the ante a little bit. And even though I don't feel like I have like perfected my forehand form at all, I feel like my forehands are coming out way cleaner and easier, and I'm having to use a lot less force to get the same distance. But real fast, some main things that really helped me were really simply, instead of starting like this and I used to always start like this if I was trying to do distance forehand like this this foot right here my leg is still pointed so straight a lot of that is because my foot is pointed very straight and so when I would go here there's not a lot of hip rotational movement we talked a lot about this last week but one thing that's really helped me is instead of starting from this position really simply starting right here and just being this a little bit more sideways it reminds my body and my mind to be a little bit more sideways as I go and my forehands come out a lot easier Go in. Oh my gosh. But doing that has made it really easy for me to, instead of trying to like rip through with my arm because my hand is back here and I'm following through like that, my body and my core rotation has become a lot easier from just going. Now my core rotates, my elbow stays close and I'm able to not really rip through a forehand, but still throw it well. See, I almost did it again. It's something I really have to practice because I've really practiced this bad forehand form and I really need to work on practicing good form right now. A lot more to work on. Let me show Let me show one more disc. Here, I'll actually go over it with mids as well so you can see. An easy 270 foot forehand, like low. I'm not really feeling like I'm throwing my arm out. My shoulder has not had pain as I focus on really starting this way, or even sometimes even doing the one steps. And that's a lot of what field work I did was, was just one step and focusing on getting it out there. But if you're really struggling with smoothness on your forehand, I would say start here. You don't even have to step fast, but stepping slowly forward slowly here to where this is much more parallel. Mine isn't quite parallel, but my hips are still much more activated this way instead of hips being forward here. Super simple. I mean, that's a pretty easy forehand for very, very little exertion. It's really about to start raining on me. Okay, on to tip number two, which is gonna be about the backhand. And this is something that really helped me to increase my backhand power. And a lot of it is talking about the grip. But we're just gonna use a couple discs that I'm gonna be reviewing here pretty soon as an example. First run Athena's, not the prototype Athena's, as well as a Ricky Wysocki Explorer. I always, always, always power grip. This is always my grip. I've gotten some questions about that. My thumb on the top is like this, and I'm really putting a lot of pressure into the flight plate when I wanna throw hard. I know some people like to fan grip like this, 
to throw a little bit softer shots. I think my hands are just too small that that feels like I don't really get any sort of comfortable grip. So always, even when I'm throwing putters, even on approach shots, I'm throwing with this grip, like very short, 100 foot distances like this shot from my last tournament, I'm throwing power grip all the way. However, what I do, and this is another thing that I saw in an overthrow video initially, but I was doing it kind of intuitively, when I want to throw a little bit less powerfully, I'll load the grip more in the middle to the back of my hand instead of right here at the front. So the pressure for my thumb isn't nearly as much because it just is more of a stabilizing motion instead of really putting a lot of pressure so that I can get as much spin out of the disc. Instead, I'm really focusing on just having it be stabilized and having these fingers be where most of my power comes from and then it comes off of these two fingers here. Now what you'll notice on your hand here, if this is the point of rotation, it's going to be rotating slower than if just this is the point of rotation because the smaller something is, the faster it can whip off and rotate around it. So when I'm trying to go for power, even on putter shots and things like that, I'm gonna go ahead and load it onto my front knuckle. So these are not really touching as much or they're still there to stabilize and they're still being gripped, but I'm really pinching between my thumb and my index finger much more so that when I release it, it kind of releases off of that index finger instead of off of these three fingers. And that point of rotation creates a lot more spin on the disc. And that's where you hear the snap. This is something that one of my buddies, Matt Odenwalder, who's one of the first MPO players that I ever played with, really was teaching me when I was in Las Vegas with him a little bit. It took me a really long time to get it and I still am having to work on it. But I would really focus on gripping harder, especially if you're all power grip like I am, harder when you want to throw farther and a little bit looser when you don't want to throw nearly as hard but I'm gonna show you some shots with my graces. So this is the grace that I'm just gonna throw a little bit less power. This is a little bit flippier than the other graces as well. And when I'm not really trying to throw it as hard, I'm still kind of, I still have the exact same grip, but I'm just really focusing on control to that light post. And that was like maybe about 80-ish percent power. So now I'm gonna try to throw the same power, but with a much tighter grip. And you're gonna see it's going to probably stay on turn a little bit more, even though it's a more stable disc. Just because it has a lot more spin. So the, the shot shape is much tighter. Woo! And you can see, even see more spin on the ground. I'm gonna real quick throw the Athena and the Explorer. Obviously when you're throwing with a tighter grip, you're gonna wanna focus a little bit more on the angle that you release the disc on because it's gonna follow that angle a little bit better. Whereas if you have especially an overstable disc, you're putting less spin on it when you're throwing those touchy or approach shots. There's obviously more ways to do it. This is just what I've found that helps me so far. I'm gonna try to really power up on these and throw these almost full power, see if we can get past that light pole. Well, that's my first throw with that disc. Ooh, baby. I would say that's a bit past the light pole there. And that stayed on that turn a little bit more. Now we're gonna throw the Explorer. Same grip, same power, just not as much pressure. So it's much looser in my hand. So that one I felt come across these three fingers. And because of that, it doesn't have nearly as much speed or spin because the rotational point on my finger is not one finger, it's four. So if you're looking for snap, that's one of the most important tips I would give you. Now let's talk about putting and hopefully not get rained out because this microphone receiver is not waterproof. <laughs> so I wasn't quite expecting this, but I just ranged that light pole and it's 421 feet from Maurice. I'll actually show you because some people aren't gonna believe me in the comments. I hope you can see this a little bit. It's oscillating right at that 422 mark. All right, sometimes you film a video and surprise yourself because this Athena, that's the light pole. We shot from back there by my van. This Athena is probably easy 425, 430. Here we're probably only about 360, 370 with my first grace. And then this other grace is probably right at about 400-ish feet, maybe slightly less. And that was again at that 65% power, just with the other grip. So that's my big grip tip. Oh, hit the bag, hit the bag. Let's go, that was sweet. All right, we're gonna get on the putting tip real fast, but I have to clean off these discs. While I do that real fast, I wanna to talk to you about my plans for Vlogmas, because if you didn't know, a lot of people in disc golf do videos every day until Christmas in December. Now I've been doing videos every day for nearly two months. I think I have a couple of days off and I'm planning on continuing that, but I'm not gonna let people beat me at my own game. So for the first week of Vlogmas in December, we're gonna be doing Bedanza Battle Miss. That's not a good title, but I've realized that my Bedanza Battle videos don't do super well and they're a lot of effort to put on. And I really enjoy making them, but they do like literally three or four times worse than most of my other videos on the channel, which is understandable. And I have seven more Bedanza Battles filmed. So every day for the first seven days of December, 
we're gonna be doing two videos a day. One will be a Bedanza battle in the morning, and then the second will just be whatever other video, disc review, training update, anything additional for disc golf, because if everybody is gonna join me with doing a video a day, I might as well beat them at their own game and do two videos. So probably gonna do about 38 or 39 videos in December alone, all on track to hit 10,000 subscribers by the end of the year, which it seems like we should be able to do. Also wanna give a big thank you guys in a video, not just a post for selling out of my first run of discs, these ones that have my stamp on them. I can't believe that so many of you guys wanted to buy those discs. I just shipped out everything mystery boxes, so it should all be on the way. The next release, I do plan on doing international shipping, or at least trying to figure what the most cost-effective way of doing that is. So I've gotten a lot of requests for that, and I'm planning on figuring it out, and I'm planning on doing some merch and apparel with that drop as well. Let's get on to the putting tips real fast. Thank you guys for sticking around. Subscribe, like the video so far, but it's not done yet. All right, it does look like our rain has stopped for the most part and more light is always better than less light for the videos. So we're gonna go ahead and talk about some putting real fast. Now I putt with Pures right now. It doesn't really matter what you putt with, this will help. And this is really a big tip that I've already talked a little bit about in a video before my channel started blowing up, but I really wanna reemphasize because as I've been doing more putts, I've been focusing on 25 to 40 foot standstill putts. Now 30 feet is still inside the circle, so you're not actually able to step putt. If I'm at 35, I'm much more confident. Step putting. Oh, there we go. So. What? I'm much more confident step putting from 35, but I'm really trying to get confident in just standstill straddle putting from everywhere up to about 45 feet. But when we're talking about the mental game of disc golf, one thing that can really hurt is if you're playing like B tier, C tiers, or anywhere that doesn't have the circle marked, if you have to step it out or range it or try to figure out if you're outside the circle to be confident about a putt, that means that when you see that you have 30 or 32 feet, you're not gonna be confident about the putt just like this putt for my Alden Harris video. Well, I don't know if we're in or out. Good. Please read at least freaking 34. It says 32 feet. And then when I move it past my lie, it says 33 feet. So it's just inside the circle. That is so frustrating. Come on, I can make a putt. Yes. No! So, to mitigate that, if I'm like 28 to 35 feet, I don't wanna have to worry about stepping because after 35, it's a little bit easier to tell that you're outside the circle, but I always get discouraged when we find out that I'm in the circle at like 30 or 31 feet, because in my head, I'm missing that putt compared to making a 35 footer. So I just wanna have the same stroke for all of those putts. So this is what that stroke's gonna look like. Instead of just kind of doing your normal putt, which I do straddle putt down here, my grip for putting is just like this, where instead of having my finger on here, because I got baby hands, this helps me get a lot more leverage, and these fingers have a little bit of room to flex open, because the more that these are curved in, the more room you have to just open your hand and flex the disc, and that gives you spin. The other thing that gives you spin, obviously, is your wrist, and then the third thing that can give you spin is your elbow joint, so pressing that forward, that'll give you a little bit extra pop and some extra height, which is important when you're spinning the disc. The big tip, that I think is pretty simple, but it's instead of trying to add an extra motion in your throw, when you go down and then cock your wrist and then come up, just cock your wrist first. That's literally it. This is what has helped me to put 100% from circle one in two rounds from my last four rounds in tournaments. Go down, just opening your hand and opening like this because that range of motion from here to here is so much spin. So it's really simple, just looks like going down and then just so much spin. You gotta focus on your aim point there. Oh, this is really easy, putting from seven feet. But that alone will help you to get so much more spin, which I know a lot of people are struggling with. So this is 35, right in between those two. So if you notice those two that I missed, look where my hand ended up, right here. My hand ended right here instead of opening up, because that little bit is more spin that can stay on the disc and more forward momentum. I'm trying to have as few things that can break in the process as possible. And one thing that can break in that process is going down and then curling or curling on your way down. If you just already have it curled, then there's one less thing they have to worry about because all you have to worry about is uncurling and not hitting that same amount of curl in your wrist every time you go down. This is obviously something I'm still working on, but it's made me much more confident in my putting abilities. If you can tell, I obviously have a lot more work to do on the putting green, but if you're trying to go from being sub 900 rated to not being able to play in intermediate anymore, these three things, just focusing on them, were some of the things that really helped me to get to that point. There's a lot more obviously to disc golf, but in terms of being consistent with my snap on my disc, not even saying like you need to throw farther, not even saying you're gonna be throwing your Athena's 430 feet, just saying if you want to be consistent and understand why you're releasing things differently, going slower starting here, 
accelerating through the disc, understanding where you're snapping the disc from the forefront of your hand or from the middle of your hand and what that's doing to the spin of your disc and the speed of your disc, as well as having one less variable in your putt going down and extending all the way through the basket. Hopefully those tips help. I have a bunch of other videos coming up and one of the things that I'm gonna be replacing a lot of the Bedanza battle content with is going to be a lot more tips and just my training progress because the time that I don't have to spend shooting and editing those videos is gonna go into my own training to get onto the Pro Tour, which I'm very excited about. So like the video, subscribe, go check out last week's Project 100 right over here where we had a full coaching session with Josh from Overthrow Disc Golf about everything that you need to do to get good distance forehands. And uh, don't look at the putters behind the basket. Okay, love you, bye. <laughs>